Illinois Board of Education, Wednesday, January 16th at 7 p.m. at Longfellow Center. Melissa, please call roll. Member Doshi. Here. Member Harris. Here. Member Hughes. Here. Member Miller. Here. Member Simanti. Here. Member Siegel. Here. Member Purcell. Here. Uh, so we're here tonight for the <coughs> superintendent uh, search proposals. Thank you for everyone coming at this early uh, early time after work and to the administrators for making the extra effort as well. Thank you. Um, okay, we can go ahead and begin. Thank you. Welcome. Well, we have the uh, PowerPoint presentation up on the screen, but we also have paper copies. Sometimes it's just easier to focus on the paper copies and make notes and stuff like that. So it's, it's easy to do that. We'll take a couple of minutes to uh, just introduce ourselves. I know we're in a tight timeline. We don't want to leave any important stuff out. And um, while Steve's passing that out, let's, Dawn, you want to start? And yeah. Just a quick intro. I'll start. I'm the newest Hi. member of this group. Um, Thank you. This is actually the second time I've been here, so I apologize if <laughs> I don't, uh, I'm not as up to date on things with them. Actually, my school board, I'm a current superintendent in Dallas Heights, and my school board just hired a um, replacement. I am retiring. Um, last Wednesday with BWP and um, the, you could call any one of them and they would um, give you an, an excellent review of the whole process. It was absolutely seamless. Now, previous to uh, my years in Taylor's Heights, I was at a K, K through 12 unit district as superintendent. And um, for that, HR, curriculum, so long, many, many years in administration. And I think probably the thing um, that I would want to point out most about me is I really work to um, network and I, I'm the immediate past president of the Suburban Superintendent Association which has 150 superintendent members um, and uh, previous to that when I was an HR director I was on the board for the Illinois Association of School Personnel Administrators. I think making those connections with others in um, education has, has been a top priority for me. Uh, my name is Steve Friesbach, and um, I retired in 2013 after a 35 year career in public education. I was a high school teacher in Evanston, a middle school principal in Lincolnwood, a principal in, in Park Ridge, Illinois, an elementary school, and then in Flossmore, Illinois, where I was living. And then I went on and finished my career at Gower School District 62 here in DuPage County, where I was assistant superintendent, later superintendent, and spent my last 11 years there. Um, since that time, I've spent um, time working with the ROE. I spent three years working with principals and, uh, and superintendents in DuPage County, which was just fascinating work. And I've been doing uh, working with BWP for six years, and I've done over 30 searches. And one of the things that it helps to do is you go around and you do these things that I've done most of mine in Illinois. Um, and it just reinforces the power of public education and the commitment of, of um, parents and community. And it's just fascinating work. And so my goal is to help you with your, your decision and, and, and help you make and uh, continue the initiatives you have going on here. And I'm Mark Friedman. I'm the uh, president of BWP Associates and one of the founding members in 2006. And as we walk through our PowerPoint, you'll see a little background on us. I have, uh, I was for 17 years, long run as superintendent in Liberty Bell, retired from that superintendency uh, nine years ago. And subsequent to that, I've done four uh, interim superintendents. So doing one now, finishing up one now in Vernon Hills. And just named the superintendent on Monday night, uh, full time to start on July 1st there. So I've done over 100 searches and been out in the area, especially uh, the DuPage area. Uh, very active in the DuPage area. Um, we also have a fourth person on our team who's in Florida tonight at a conference, but it's Sheila Harrison Williams, and, and we're really proud of, of Sheila. She is now the president of the Illinois Association School Administrators, which is the statewide superintendents association. Highly visible, well sought out, um, actually lives in the area and is killing herself because she can't be here, but not that much because she's in Florida <laughs> and we're going to get 12 inches of snow. So uh, we really have a powerful team and uh, hopefully you'll get a, a sense from talking to us, even though it's a short period of time, 
as to what we'll bring to the table. And we'll have two things. We're going to walk you quickly through this PowerPoint, highlight something, give you a chance to interrupt us and ask questions. Please do that. That's important. And second, we've kind of visualized what a timeline would look like for your search. So we have that would probably, I don't know if we'll have enough time to uh, walk you through it, but we'll leave that with you so you can see that. And it brings you to spring break with the new superintendent appointment. So we've done these. We can expedite things. We can move at a quicker pace, a slower pace. We've done them all. And um, you know, all you have to do is call District 181 right nearby in Hinsdale, and they'll tell you last spring we were, they were in the same position as you were, and we were able to bring together great candidates for superintendent, and then we did an assistant superintendent position for them and director of uh, special ed, and so on and so forth, all in a condensed time frame. So we're flexible, we work for you, so we'll come up with a great plan, and we'll make it all work. So if uh, you want to quickly walk us through the first couple slides that you'll see really talk about our information. information. And, and I'm not going to dwell on that, other than the thing that we really want to do is that our goal is to create a su successful outcome for you. And we measure that in, in number one, um, helping you get a good hire, and number two, in the longevity of that person and the, the accomplishments they have here. And we'll talk a little further about that. Everything is designed because we believe that school and school districts are best served um, with continuity. And with, um, that allows you to advance initiatives and maintain those things and support and develop your staff. And, um, and as a board, you develop a relationship with that superintendent. Um, when you hire um, PWP, the four of us, um, three in front of you, <laughs> will be the ones that will actually work here. But we have a network uh, and, and uh, nine other partners they'll be working with us as 50 others. And the first thing we'll do um, is, is contact them and, and start getting nominations for this kind of position. So I um, want to let you know that that's who we are. Yeah, so you, you have a page in there where it's up there about just how many searches um, our organization has been a part of. And um, fairly we, these are all fairly recent. Right. Um, we, don't, we just don't wait for people to you know, see it and apply, we contact what you're looking for based on what you tell us when we meet about what your needs are, what your community says or your administration. Um, you know, we, we are actively looking for what's going to best fit your needs. The next, what we, what we have in these next several slides is an outline of our process. It's about a nine-step process with, with sub-steps underneath each one. And it begins with just setting up a calendar, setting up a meeting date, telling you to save dates at the end of the line for your interviews, uh, conducting an audit should you choose, doing an online survey of your constituents and your stakeholders. And we offer you a lot of options. With some of the options are pretty much an automatic. Some of them are, if you really like to do that, we're glad to do that. But the key is, we plan, we launch the recruitment, we conduct an audit, and we develop this candidate profile, and we use this candidate profile to help us narrow down the applicant pool, and for you to also see where the match is from what your stakeholders are telling you. There isn't one way to do this. There's lots of ways, but it needs to fit with your style and the way in which your community works. And uh, the one thing that probably cuts through all of it is that we believe the process should be transparent. So people should know what's going on, when it's going on, timelines, also how they're involved in that um, and how they're not involved in it. Because ultimately, we always want to remind people that it's your decision who to hire a superintendent. You're the elected officials, and even though you may involve other people in it, um, uh, you want, we want to also be clear that you know their input is important, but ultimately it's your response. Let's throw a lot into that. We're, we're really cognizant of time here. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, the, the next few steps, again, we'll review the applications. We'll screen down from the number of people who are in the initial pool, and we'll bring you a qualified five or six, maybe four, but generally around six candidates for you to interview, and then we'll present that slate to you with background on each of these candidates, 
some reference checks on the candidates, all the stuff to prepare you for a set of interviews that you will all go through. And in today's you know, society, we, we need to make sure that we, we do that. We go above and beyond to check the backgrounds, and, and you'll see that in our presentation. And then the, the wrap-up steps, we will conduct a, a workshop with you. We'll spend an hour and a half or two hours getting you ready for your process. We will provide you with sample questions or help you craft sample questions. We'll give you the protocol. We'll give you scoring rubrics. We'll give you all the tools that you need. You just need to show up, work with us, and you'll be prepared to do all the things that are necessary to narrow that pool down to two or three. And from there, those two or three, you'll make your selection. And we'll also be with you along the road to making that selection of the final person. And we'll help you with the contract. So we'll do all those pieces. Every step along the way, we will be there with you. And that's part of uh, hiring a team. And everybody on the team will be part of it. And the ultimate goal is that you will feel satisfied with the process and happy with your selection at the end. Uh, we've got a really good track record. And this is one of the things we're really proud of. The process leads to um, a, a lot of, all, almost all of our candidates um, completing a three year contract and, and almost all of them being offered successor contracts. We think that says something about the process and the way in which we work with candidates and work with boards. We work for boards, we don't work for candidates. And, um, and we think that uh, is, is ultimately the measure of a search firm, is how successful they are in, in with the people that are hired by boards. And a second measure is how many boards come back to us and say, will you work for us and with us again? Or will you do other work for us, principal, assistants, you name it? Happens so often. And that's why I earlier uh, mentioned that District 181, because we did multiple things for them, and many districts do that. So it's the relationship we build. Mm -hmm. yeah, Our, so guar go ahead and Our guarantee will be on call throughout the search. You have us at the back and call. We'll be available to mentor the new superintendent. Whether he or she has experience or not, we want to be there in that first year to help deal with all the little issues that arise. So we're there. One of us will be designated, and then all four of us will be part of that process. If the selected candidate does not complete two years in the position, we'll repeat the search for expenses only. Knock on wood, we haven't had to do that, but we put that out there. And we won't slate um, a candidate in another search for the term of the initial contract. So we're not going to poach the good person that you're going to hire to go send them down the, ro the road to uh, a, na a neighboring district. Yeah. We would do that. Yeah. We've, we've, we've given you a copy and, and want to make sure that you understand our fees. And um, I won't go through those because you can see it, but every effort would be made to keep our expenses as low as possible. We know that anything you spend on us, you're not spending on students and uh, um, we're not extravagant in what we do. Uh, we think there's lots of good reasons to hire us, so we hope we do. You've heard some of those things today. Sure. The most important thing yeah. uh, is our success rate. Uh, to our effort, our <laughs> yes. uh, uh, active efforts to recruit people, our ability to create a process that you want, and, uh, um, and follow through and make sure that that person is successful in the job working with all of you. This was like speed dating. <laughs> 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 we, we, we definitely yeah. don't want to overlook being very talented. Yeah. No, no, no. And we've had the yeah. presentation. Yeah, we've yeah. had the presentation. So yeah. all of us have been able to look at them prior. Good, um, good. And Melissa's been very easy to deal with. Uh, that's the information. <laughs> the information we got is very accurate. This this timeline really starts you right away. However, there is room to modify things. Oops. There is room to modify things, and there is room for you to take and change a date, move a date up, move a date back. That's This is just an outline to see the kinds of steps that you have to commit to. And, and committing means catching those dates in March. Now, so you're going you're gonna to be looking at interviews, you're going to be looking at meetings, closed session meetings, and you'll want to calendarize as many of them as you can at the front end. Because if you wait till the end, if you wait till the middle of March to try and get a date to 
towards the end of March before winter, uh, spring break, you're going to find it very difficult for seven people to come up with clean days out of the calendar. So we really encourage that. So a couple, a couple questions you, uh, regarding the just our general timeline. You mentioned that you did a search last year at 181 mm -hmm. around this time. Um, is is the exact same time? Is this is this a, a time? I guess we a, a good time to look for superintendents. Is this the time of year that the most are available, or what's your sort of feeling on? You know, on that? I know it's dominoes, right? Because then we'll hire somebody potentially. They'll be at another district, and then that district will have to hire. But what's your? We've seen that. We've seen that in many places where that domino has fallen. And Somebody down at the end of the line will say, "Well, we're going to do an interim and wait for a year." But it's it's never you can't ever say that it's a good or a bad time because there's interest in individual districts specifically because of that district. So perhaps the person that's your next superintendent is sitting in his or her seat right now with no thought of looking for another job, but here's the district 58s open. It's a that's a district that I've always wanted to work for. I like the size, I like the community, I like all of that. That person may be sparked in, into exploring interest. We would follow up with them. So, and numbers, numbers are nebulous. I, just because you get 50 doesn't mean that those 50 people are all qualified. You only need one. That's yeah, right. all you need is one. Thank you. You took my speech away. Yeah, it's like all you need is the right. Can you talk a little bit about how you vet candidates mm -hmm. so that we don't have a surprise after? Right. <laughs> right. The vetting is something that we take a lot of pride in because of our networking and our knowledge of the candidate pool that's out there. Uh, Don was very modest, but uh, as president of the Suburban Superintendents Association, she has access to everyone. Sheila, who is the president of the statewide association, there is nobody in Illinois that we don't know something about. So that's the surface stuff. And I'm not saying bad stuff, but you do know that too. Uh, the surface stuff. And uh, then we get a little deeper. We can go as far as you want to go as far as background checks are concerned. Right. Obviously, the district has to put a candidate through a criminal background check. That's Having that's just gone through it, yeah. I mean, that was, that was the number one concern of my board as well. And I, I know that these guys talk to them over and over again about we don't just we we just don't because it's it's our reputation on the line you know we're we're calling other people just like we should all be doing in, in teaching in any other education position but especially this making sure that there's nothing out there. The whole idea is people give us references. We we want to go beyond that. We want and we'll know people who work there. We we'll do all the internet stuff. Um, and look at all the social media things. But ultimately, we really think that the key is to know the people who know the people. Right. Um, and not always the people they give us. The Very few people from out of state are applying for the districts in Illinois. Right. So it eliminates a lot of the mystery. Face-to-face interviews? Well, we don't have time to discuss all of those. <laughs> <laughs> so we do the face-to-face -face interviews with candidates yes, before yes. giving them to you. Right. So it's not like... You know, we just talked to them over the phone. They sound great. <laughs> you know, they meet all they meet all your needs. No, we met them. And <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. One, one last question: sure. Conflicting searches. Uh, if you, if you, I don't know how many people you're. We don't have any others coming. You're looking right now. Right okay. Now we have so one. I wouldn't. I don't know if, if if you have another search, which you don't. If you did, would that preclude? Or if one other one comes up, what do you do about the candidates? If if you're showing us candidates and you get hired to show for another district, you show them the candidates. We usually, we don't like to have boards compete. So we use that profile to really determine who's the better fit for which district. It's something that's sort of subjective on our part. But that's a real telling piece. The idea behind that sometimes also is to ask the candidate, you know, which of these districts if you're out there just throwing your head out to anything, we're a little turned off by that anyway. We, we want someone to be interested in District 58, not, oh, that's a good job. I'm just going to go after it because it's like every other good job. No, we, we want them to do their homework, to pay attention to what's going on in District 58, come and tell us about 
District 58 during our interview process and be able to do the kinds of things that show commitment. So if that's all equal, we'll sit down and we'll have that sort of man-to-man, woman-to-woman talk and, and vet that out ourselves. But if a board would say, we don't care, we're really confident in ourselves, we can win them over, we would, we would allow a candidate to be involved. In general, we don't try to pit clients, pit clients against clients. Right. Uh, it sounds like it's not a problem right now. Anyway. Right now, no. Okay. We are, we're finishing one <coughs> very prominent search, that's the Evoca District, and um, we interview on Friday. <laughs> so that'll, that's just about that. Okay. And I think because this group has done so many, you saw the list, they know who's kind of putting out there for multiple jobs and who's kind of special to this position. We right. will tell you this, at last Friday's Suburban Superintendent meeting, we were pulled into the corner by several people. Are you guys going to get the Downers Grove job? And so people have politicized this to a point. It's their interest. In yeah, they're, they're interested. They're shown interest. interest. They yeah. And when we're out there, and like we said, we're out there networking and we're out there at all the important events. And so people do approach us. And I think your superintendent will tell you that uh, we're pretty active. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. There's a possibility I may be following up with some. Okay. Yeah, hey, that, that's perfectly okay. Yeah. Usually we have that already, but. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks. Email and name for anybody who just went through it. <laughs> feel free. I can give you some of some of my board members. And I feel comfortable. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Please call a reference. Yeah. Please call 181. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we seem to have some contacts over there. We seem to have some contacts over there. Hello. Hello. Hello there. Thank you. One for you. Thank you. Hello, welcome. So we uh, we've allotted fifteen minutes. For all groups, and uh, just in the interest of fairness, and also uh, we've also had your presentation, just so you're aware. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Well, thank you uh, for giving uh, Hazard Young and Atia this opportunity to uh, possibly be your search consultant for the uh, next uh, superintendent. It seemed like only a few months ago that we were <laughs> in the same uh, room for a different uh, proposal. But uh, again, we greatly appreciate this opportunity. I'm Ken Arndt. I'm one of the associates for Hazard Young and Tia, and joining me is Mary Benowitz, also an associate. I live in Algonquin. Mary lives in Downers Grove. So with that, uh, we have a uh, PowerPoint presentation that's been printed out for you. However, what we would like to do is just spend 10 minutes sharing with you some of our key highlights of our proposal. And then the last five minutes give you the opportunity to ask us any questions you might have. So Hazard Young and Atiyah has been in business since 1987. We have done well over 1,200 searches. We have associates throughout the United States. And our headquarters are lo is located in Schaumburg with uh, offices also in New Jersey and in California. And our primary focus has been always uh, executive searches, strategic planning, and also professional development. And we, we feel that uh, we are unique in that our firm really emphasizes the engagement process. Uh, we feel that it's very important for strategic planning and superintendent searches to really engage the community. The Board of Education obviously makes the final decision, but the superintendent is the CEO of the district. 
And when persons feel that the board gave them an opportunity to share what their thoughts are in terms of what are the challenges, what should be the, the future direction of the district, uh, it really does, in our opinion, help solidify the process. So we basically have three areas. We, one is engage, which is the community engagement focus, which are the focus groups that uh, you saw us participate or engage in with the strategic planning process. The online survey is also a critical component, which is all research-based. And then with that information, we use that to help recruit the best possible candidates for your next superintendent. And then the selection phase, which is primarily the board driven. Okay. Thank you. Um, so while you have a full PowerPoint, we're going to focus on slides 5, 6, 13, and 14. Um, you're free to either follow us with the projection or in printed form if you choose. Um, Ken uh, provided you with some background information about HYA and associates. In addition to that, um, we've worked with a variety of searches from the largest uh, districts and systems in the United States to some districts with only a few hundred students. <coughs> Rural, suburban, and uh, urban locations, and a cross-section of racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic diversity. Um, so a, a wide range. Um, our searches also are highlighted with executive oversight from our central office here in uh, the Schomburg area and supported by a very full professional office staff and technological infrastructure to help progress our work and make it a more quick, efficient process. As Ken uh, began to talk about, the search process really is uh, involving four different phases. The engage phase, where we use the information gathered from the interviews, the focus groups, the online survey, um, and from, from the board itself and any other uh, areas that you wish us to use to develop what we would consider like a profile, the selection criteria which will then be used to go about the search process. The recruitment phase, the second phase, is where the team actively works on recruiting candidates using all of our contacts, contacts in the area and across the United States to find the very best candidates for the position uh, per your defined criteria. We then, in that phase, also bring to the board a slate of candidates that meet those criteria uh, from which you, you choose, um, go through the interview process, <coughs> whittle down the, the field, and then go to the next step. In the selection phase, that's where we will assist uh, with training and support of the board to select the final candidate. From there, we go into the transition phase. And that's where we assist the board with a variety of next steps, including background investigations, site visits, um, any kind of optional training services, supporting your work and finalizing a contract with the individual, and then obviously the announcement of the appointee. So those are, are some of the highlights of the process. There's a lot more detailed information in your packet. Okay. Slide 15, we have a proposed calendar for the search. Uh, this is really an uh, ideal time to do a superintendent search at this time. We try to uh, find to have the, the process completed just before the school year ends so that as your new, candidate, new superintendent will have an opportunity, hopefully, to meet some of the staff and parents, etc. before everybody leaves for spring break. I would like to add, in terms of the recruitment phase, uh, it has been our experience that probably 60, if not 70 percent of the candidates that we select for the slate are selected only because of the recruitment process. We will do an aggressive advertising campaign, but we use our references in terms of telling our associates we have a superintendent position in Downers Grove. Are you aware of anyone that's interested? And we have found that most of the candidates come to the area because they either grew up in the area or they have family in the area or this is where they wish to raise their family themselves. 
So that's all part of the internal networking that we use throughout the United States with our associates to try to find the best candidates. Advertising is very important, but we found our best results have been the recruitment phase. The calendar that you see before you, anything that's in bold capital letters is really board driven. We will be there obviously to help you with every step of the way, but those are the times when the Board of Education needs to be together, all seven, to make some very critical decisions. And again, we have just this all customized uh, for your district. We just selected January 21st as a day to get started. If you'd like to start even earlier this week, we could do that likewise. But again, the target would be to finish the middle of May. Again, the HYA difference in conclusion is we are nationally based. We've been in business for well over 30 years. Uh, we have gone an extra step in terms of the executive uh, due diligence report. It's not just a background check. But your top three candidates, if that's who you wish to see an executive uh, diligence search be conducted, uh, they have to agree to go through a complete uh, criminal and civil uh, court hearings, what are the records. They also have to agree to a social media search and news media search for the last five years. Again, we do not want to see any school board become embarrassed because of whomever they might select, and it certainly is not a reflection. We do not want that reflection on HYA either. This is something that we have started over the last three years, and the boards definitely appreciate that. We'll also add that it will be an executive summary form. These reports are well over 30 to 40 pages in length. We just, you will get that report, but you'll also get the executive summary, just highlighting any areas of concern that there might be in that candidate. And again, as Mary said, uh, we also have supervisors, and so there's two other persons in our office that check on our work life. So with that, we will stop and uh, address any questions you might have for us at this time. Um, <clears throat> a couple questions. Um, your timeline is most of most of those dates are they they're board driven as, as far as when they are always they are always board driven uh, we always are certainly those. trying to get seven people together at certain times or and these are dates that we knew that the board was going to be together anyway okay so, so <laughs> that's that's a reason why they were just arbitrarily selected got it um, you talked about uh, doing ads uh, well, and references uh, how much and what do you do regarding that, that advertising? What we're recommending is basically the, uh, the minimum, which is Education Week. That is a uh, national weekly periodical. But then there are so many websites. We use all the uh, state and the Midwest uh, uh, or professional organizations. Uh, we take care of that. What the district would need to do, though, is provide for us the ad they wish to see used in the publications. And this is something that we work with the, the staff. And then we give, usually it's the board president or whoever the representative is. If you see anything wrong with it, you think this would work. And then we, we, we start with that. But again, ads are important, but it's the recruiting that we found more, that we have found is more valuable. Um, and about the community outreach, who and how, how do you normally involve the community besides the, like, the online surveys? Right, we, we do focus groups. Um, similar to a strategic planning process. Um, so there are ways that we will work with the district to identify stakeholders who would be best to get involved with that type of process. Okay. Very similar to what we recently went through with the strategic mm -hmm. plan. The only difference being we have found that for an elementary district, trying to get high school, trying to have eighth grade students to give us really valuable feedback on their superintendent is tough. They can tell you about their principal, but a superintendent is a little bit, a little bit difficult. That's the only area that we found that really doesn't work very well. And that doesn't mean we wouldn't do it. It's up to That's the desire board. of the board. <laughs> um, just it hasn't been that helpful. Everything is customized for your district. And, and do you have any current searches? Yeah, I, I, ha know. I have only one right now, which is in uh, Wyoming, Ohio, which is outside Cincinnati. Uh, HYA makes certain that their associates do not do more than two searches at any time. And Mary, I don't believe 
Um, I just completed one with Decatur Public Schools. Okay. Okay. I ask just in case we have a conflict or you, we want to make sure you can bring us all the available candidates. There's not. There, there won't be any conflict if you select our firm. Okay. You will have our priorities. Got it. Um, okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Probably knew the bills of the village. Did it the I same thing. They made up your side. We need to get rid of those big sides. Hello, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Uh, so we've allotted 15 minutes for a firm, and then we'll have just a couple questions at the end. Uh, and there's a possibility that we might follow up with you after, just if we have any follow up questions. Okay, perfect. Um, in the next week. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Well, I appreciate being able to be here tonight. And, uh, my name is Al Mulby, and I'm with the Illinois Association of School Boards. And I work with the Executive Search Division. I've been with the uh, association four years now. I'm a retired superintendent. I was superintendent in a uh, uh, K-8 school district in Cook County, Hillside Elementary District. <coughs> I was there for 15 years. Uh, I was principal before that. And I was in education total for about 38 years. Uh, when I retired, and my school board was actually replacing me, which was kind of weird to watch happen, they uh, decided to use the school board association to conduct the search. So I had a chance to uh, really see the process kind of from the inside without having too much input into it. And it was a, a really great opportunity because I uh, was able to develop a lot of respect for what the School Board Association does. And so when I had an opportunity to come and work with them, um, it gives me a chance to work with districts who uh, I need to remind them that we're in your association. And so doing searches, uh, doing the searches for uh, superintendents and other administrative positions it uh, gives us a chance to hopefully help local boards continue to be successful, and that's exactly what the association wants to have happen, and that's uh, one of the reasons why when we do a search, uh, we always make sure that we let the board know that we know that it's your search. We're the ones that are conducting it. We're doing the grunt work. I'm doing all of the, uh, uh, the hard work that goes into it, uh, but the bottom line is we want it to be a successful search, that right fit that everybody talks about, because our job is not done when the next superintendent signs a contract. Our job continues to be your association to make sure that uh, the transition and the new superintendent is successful in the opportunities that they're going to have here in Downers Grove. So I think that's one of the things we always want to start our presentation with is that um, it's your search, but we're the ones that are making sure that you're going to be successful as the search evolves and uh, comes to fruition with the new superintendent. Uh, 
I'll just do a quick overview of the process, and if you have questions, you can jump in along the way, or at the end, however you, you prefer to do that. Uh, we start the process uh, by putting together a profile of what seems to be the ideal characteristics for the, the next superintendent. Uh, we do that in a variety of ways, usually three, three main ways, uh, which would involve a survey of the community, your stakeholders, your staff, uh, that just kind of gives a chance for them to have some initial input into the process, identifying certain characteristics that uh, they might be wanting in the next superintendent. It also gives you as a board a chance to have questions on that survey where you can kind of get a sense of uh, tendencies or feelings that the community and the staff might have for certain things related to uh, the next superintendent. Uh, we also conduct uh, stakeholder interviews. Uh, I would arrange for uh, meetings with staff and stakeholders and whatever means that you as a board see the best way to go about doing that where the, these stakeholders would have a chance to provide input into the process as well, what kind of characteristics they would be looking for in the next superintendent. Uh, combine that with my individual interviewing of you of board as board members uh, to get a chance to talk to you one-on-one uh, -on -one as far as what you see as uh, your desires for the next superintendent. Combine that into one composite uh, uh, summary for the entire board that the interviews are done anonymously so that uh, you can be candid with me and then all of that information will be shared with the entire board uh, without identifying specific board members in that. So together, all of these things together, put together that profile. Uh, we still put together a, an announcement of vacancy brochure that gets uh, posted in PDF form to all of the different sites that we use to promote vacancies that we're working with. Uh, we don't we used to send them out by mail or be administrated in the state of Illinois. I would always get these in the mail uh, uh, with these little brochures. There's a sample of one in the brochure that I gave you, the folder that I gave to you. Uh, what that does is to give kind of a composite look at not only your district, uh, the features of your district, but also the results of that survey and those initial interviews and those stakeholder meetings to kind of give potential candidates a chance to know what you might be looking for in your next uh, superintendent. It also provides a timeline and some of the uh, basics to go along with the search process itself. We work only with districts in Illinois, obviously, because we're, we're the Illinois Association. However, we draw candidates from all across the country. Uh, we, uh, we found that when candidates are looking, especially as superintendent candidates are looking to relocate to Illinois, the first place that they look is on the IASA job bank and also on our, uh, our job site to see what vacancies that we are conducting the searches for. So the, uh, the fact that we're an Illinois association, we do limit ourselves to who we're working with. And there's 865 school districts in the state of Illinois, so we do searches only within the state, but we draw candidates from across the country and even internationally too. Uh, the pool of candidates that we will draw will be pretty much the same pool of candidates that any of the for-profit firms will be drawing to. And that's kind of the way it is these days, is that everybody knows who's doing searches for who. And that's, that makes it pretty easy for candidates because all they have to do is contact one of the four major firms or us and say, you know, we want to know what searches you're doing and we might be interested in that search. So when we promote and advertise the vacancy, we do that through linking of the different job sites that are out there through the different organizations. We have a nationwide presence through the uh, uh, National Affiliation of Superintendent Searchers. It's an organization that's kind of a subdivision of uh, the NASB, of the National School Board Association. And what it is is I think it's 44 out of the 50 states are all part of this now, and it's a group of uh, searchers like myself and like the other consultants that work for IASB. And we are able to use that organization's uh, job bank as a way to promote our vacancies that we're working with throughout the country. And so it's a very easy way to now uh, get the word out that these vacancies are there that we're working with. And uh, when a vacancy for Downers Grove is promoted through that, uh, the, the draw will be very significant for applicants for, for this position. And that's, that's definite. Uh, we keep the application open for about four to six weeks. I know your time frame is very is very uh, uh, restricted in a sense, and so we would uh, make sure that the process goes as quickly as you need it to go. Uh, 
the uh, most candidates who apply for superintendent positions have all of their information already uploaded into the AppleTrack system. So it's very easy for a candidate to complete an application for a superintendency right now. Uh, but we will keep that application open for about four weeks after the brochure is, has been published and posted as a PDF on the various job bank websites so that uh, when the candidates apply, they know exactly what's expected as far as the time frame, they know what's expected as far as the requirements and the criteria that you board have determined, and that also has been determined through some of this preliminary work that we did in building the profile. After the, the application is closed, uh, we, and I say we, myself, and another, at least one, probably two other consultants, would screen the complete applications, the ones that are complete, meaning the ones that have everything you expect to have in an application packet. Generally, that would be a letter of ref, uh, a letter of interest, a complete resume, the a online application itself, which is a very extensive online set of questions, as well as material that's expected to be uploaded into the application. Uh, three current references, reference letters that would be included, as well as transcripts, and also Illinois licensure. We don't bring any candidate to a board uh, who does not have uh, Illinois licensure uh, because. On July 1st of, of this year, you know, when somebody is the new superintendent, they have to have that Illinois license. And candidates from out of state know that. We encourage them to already get that process going through Springfield, through ISPE, uh, to get their proper licensure so that when they are brought to a board to interview, uh, then they already have that necessary licensure. Uh, however many candidates the board has a desire to, to interview initially, then that's how many we would bring. Generally, we're looking at Boards want to interview somewhere between six to eight candidates, sometimes ten, in the initial round of interviews. Uh, following that, they usually invite two to three candidates back for final, more extensive interviews, which would involve possibly uh, staff, community administrative team, and so on. We encourage boards to do, be the ones to do the initial interviewing only, rather than involving others in those initial interviews. We find that the more people you involve in the interviewing process, the more that you kind of filtered out, you know, and everybody likes somebody, and so you're going to have a hard time with the consensus as far as those two or three finalists if you involve a lot of people in the initial interviews. One of the options that we do provide is that we can do the initial interviewing and bring you just the finalists that you wish. Uh, that's not part of our basic service. Boards tend not to want to do that all the time, so we give them the option, and that's an additional optional cost in terms of that piece, too. Um, we can work with you in the interviewing process if that's something that you wish. We can uh, work with the board in terms of mock interviews. Uh, we conduct uh, limited background inquiries. We don't do a, a, an authorized background check because we're not allowed to do that. Our legal department and school board association indicates to us that that's obviously the responsibility of the hiring entities. And so we do background inquiries where we contact uh, references myself and the other consultants that would be working on this search. We contact the other consult. We contact the references uh, that are provided to us, and we would make sure that that information is provided to you too. Um, if there's any other pieces of the process along the way, as I've kind of real quickly you know, gone through this, you know, we certainly would uh, shape our search to be what the board desires in terms of. Uh, uh, making sure that it is a, a quality, extensive search that's done in, in a relatively short period of time. Uh, we find that uh, districts in the suburban area, and I work primarily with districts in, in the northern part of the state here in the suburban area. I work out of the Lombard uh, School Board office. Our other consultants right now are all based out of the Springfield office. However, we kind of we work throughout the whole state as far as the screening of the, of the candidates and screening of the applications. It would be myself and another at least one or two other consultants from the Springfield office who would be working with you as we uh, work through the next few months here in terms of the process. Um, what questions can I ask for, answer for you at this point? Right? Yeah, so just a couple. What, what um, <coughs> find, finding candidates besides just the ads or putting it, uh, putting it out there advertising, how else do you find candidates? Do you network for existing superintendents or it would be do you reach out or is it only... We, we reach out in a limited way. We don't actively recruit a candidate and say, we will get you an interview with the Downers Grove Board. Uh, part of the reason we don't do that, and sometimes we, we're kind of... You know, it's made known by, by private firms that we don't recruit. Well, if we were to say that we will recruit candidates for you, then our obligation to you as a board 
as your association is somewhat somewhat softened in a sense because if I'm going to bring you the best candidate and go out and handpick that person to bring to you to interview and, and get that person a job, if I'm going to recruit for another district in another year or two, then I'm going to want to come and handpick this person and bring them to that next district. And so uh, it kind of, uh, we kind of limit the, the rec term recruiting and what we do. If we know of candidates that would be very worthy of you looking at them and they would be a quality person to consider and we know that they're looking for a position, then we do meet with them and we say, you know, this is something that you probably want to be considering. We don't guarantee anybody interviews in that respect. Right. Uh, so the, the term recruiting, we kind of, uh, we shy away from it only because we have an obligation to you as a board to be successful, not only now, but also in three years and five years and so on. And so that kind of, you know, we, we don't want to find ourselves Know, hand picking people and taking them to the other districts to let them be successful there too. That's not fair to you as a right. board. The process doesn't end once uh, he or she signs a contract. I mean, we have an obligation to you for that transition to be successful. Uh, the field service, uh, the field service director for for uh, you would be responsible for helping in transitioning uh, the new superintendent through workshops that would be at no cost to you uh, because we think that again. It still goes back to, it continues on after after July 1st and after the contract signing. We don't just stop at that point. We want to make sure that, that it's a, a, a successful transition. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what's your opinion just on the timing of us looking now versus other times in the year? I uh, think that, well, I think right now it's... You know, uh, people who are looking to, to move on and make, make changes or looking for new positions, uh, they're very actively looking right right now. It, it tends to go in waves, but uh, we find that districts, especially bigger districts, uh, don't have a lot of problem finding quality candidates, no matter what time of year it is. But I think that this is, uh, this is a good time as far as people looking for positions. Uh, we're working with a lot of districts and searches that are already... Uh, Starting now for a potential uh, July 1st of 2020 start date, but we're working with districts that are ready to to have somebody in place on July 1st of this year too. So it kind of varies, but I think that um, it's it's a very strong pool. It will be a very healthy pool for a district like yours. There's a lot of people who obviously are going to be very drawn to uh, uh, to Denver's Okay, and, and I assume based on what you said regarding uh, <coughs> the IASB stance, you would, there wouldn't be a conflict. Or if you're, you're, if you're recruiting for another district currently, <coughs> would that stop you from bringing candidates forward? To not at all. Not years? at all. I mean, when we have candidates that apply through us, and we, you know, we feel like they should be advanced in the process, uh, we, we do that no matter you know, if, it's, if it's more than one search that we're working with at the same time that that person's involved in. Uh, we feel that... You know, the candidate is entitled to be considered a strong candidate in, in a, any of the districts that they're interested in, and then uh, uh, we work with them in, in that capacity. Right. Okay. Uh, I hope that you. answered. Yeah, did. Question. Thank you. I think you covered my other questions. Mm -hmm. So, thank you very much. Right. Any other questions? Or? Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate thank it. You thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>
How close are they? Um, he said he probably pretty close to the um, he expected him to arrive by six thirty. That's a little ahead. It was six thirty. Oh, it's six twenty-five. It's six twenty-five right now. Okay. We'll wait a couple minutes. Okay. Sure. So I'll just give a couple more minutes and then I'll. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to stick to the Right, let's do that. Okay, so we'll take a five minute recess. Yeah. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We have allowed 15 minutes and then we'll have call it a five minute question if that's okay with you. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Sure. First of all, on behalf of School Executive, thank you for the opportunity to present to you um, our proposal for for doing search. Uh, my name is Gary Zabilka. I am a partner with the firm. I have been with the firm for about seven years. Prior to that, um, I was a superintendent. Actually, I began my superintendent career uh, here in Downers Grove, where I was the superintendent of <coughs> Upper Hampton School District, uh, 69, <laughs> uh, where I was superintendent there for four years. Um, I left there the year before. It was officially dissolved, but was there during a good part of that time and learned a lot, worked actually pretty closely with Dr. Dale Martin at that time uh, regarding uh, what would happen when it would eventually happen. Like I said, I had left then prior to, um, just prior to the dissolution and uh, uh, stayed in Morton Grove for 10 years while I retired as superintendent. In addition to that, I am a representative for the Illinois Association of School Administrators, a superintendent's organization. In that role, I coach and I men mentor uh, new superintendents and uh, also provide professional development for administrators in general. I'm also an adjunct uh, professor at Loyola University where I teach leadership courses in school finance. Mention all of those things just to say that still extremely connected and well versed in what current things uh, new and excellent superintendents need to be aware of and uh, so that's the, what I hope to bring to you. Good evening again. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm Harry Rossi. I'm one of the founding members of School Exec Connect and uh, one of the partners in the firm. Um, I was superintendent of schools for 18 years in Northbrook Glenview School District 30, where I believe I may have hired Carrie Kremascoli for her very first job as a school psychology intern <laughs> a few years ago. Um, since retiring, I've, I've been a, um, a, a partner in the firm. I've been an adjunct professor at Loyola University teaching uh, superintendent's courses for the last 20 years, uh, I do mentoring through the North Cook Intermediate Service Center uh, for first year administrators. Uh, also, someone who could not be here tonight who will be part of our team is uh, Dr. Diane Rossi, who happens to be my wife. Um, but more importantly for you, she is the um, retired assistant superintendent for special education at the Northern Suburban Special Education District and prior to that worked in LADSI and she will be working with us uh, if we're fortunate enough to get the search. Just want to mention a couple of things really quickly. Um, there is no other firm that has done more suburban searches since 2004 than we have. Um, we, Gary and I, have done a number of abbreviated searches, that is, searches in two months uh, or so in uh, the past couple of years. Uh, we don't, as a firm, offer uh, mentoring because through the Illinois Association of School Administrators, um, every first year administrator, every first year superintendent gets free mentoring with the best uh, available superintendents and the person who coordinates that program for the state 
in the northern region is sitting right next to me here, Dr. Sibilko. Also want to make one other point, and that is that our fee includes everything. We do not have any extra charges beyond what you see for the consultant's fee. We don't charge for focus groups or, or anything else. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to do a, a very brief presentation. I'm mainly going to be focusing on a management summary that you have in front of you. You've had a chance to look over our uh, proposal. Um, we really feel at this point in time in January, the most critical meeting would be our planning meeting which you, with you, which we would hope would be able to happen within the next couple of weeks where we would plan out with you the timeline, we have a proposed timeline, but we would ask you to sit down with calendars in hand, plan the search with us uh, to make sure that hopefully by the end of March at the latest that we would be able to find the next great superintendent for you in Downers Grove, District 58. In order to do that, um, we will devote our time and, and we'll need the board to be able to uh, to be available to meet with candidates in, in two rounds. Um, we'll work very closely with your staff, uh, point people to make sure that we can facilitate uh, focus groups, uh, and by that I mean places and times. Also with your um, technology people and your um, other uh, professional people who, who do your, your planning for your website to make sure that we get this up and online as, as quickly as possible. Uh, we would do an online survey uh, and also that online survey would be the same survey that we would be using while we're meet, meeting with focus groups so that we would get common data. Uh, we would then present that to you in a profile and for you we would pick out common attributes that we keep seeing between and among all of the groups with whom we're meeting. At this point in time, I think one of the most important things that we can say to you is that what um, we specialize in, and I think because of all of the contacts we both have throughout the state and beyond, this is going to be a job um, where we're going to be out recruiting. Uh, we're going to uh, recruit uh, the best sitting superintendents, and some of the rising stars who are in assistant superintendent positions right now uh, and try to bring to you the very best in both of those categories. Uh, we understand that this is um, you know, a complex district and that you know, you're looking for someone that has great experience. Um, so we will indeed bring you experienced superintendents, but we also feel there are some really good people who are out there right now who uh, we're in uh, Dr. Kermaskoli's situation before she got this position, who are absolutely ready to do the job for you as well. So not only passively accepting candidates, but actively recruiting people uh, on day one after we have a, a signed uh, letter of agreement from, uh, from you to, to us. Uh, we'll work with you to prepare for your interviews. We'll provide whatever ever documents you have. We would also suggest, uh, if it's at all possible, that when you get down to your final interviews, because we will probably be bringing to you somewhere around six or so initial candidates for you to interview, and again, we'll help you with that process. When you get down to your final two, possibly three, We'd recommend that you have a stakeholders group that represents staff members, community, um, parents, and so on. And we will provide a process for you where that group would meet prior to your final meetings, would uh, give you written feedback, uh, no ranking or anything like that, but written feedback based on what they have seen when they've uh, interviewed the candidates. Uh, and then that would come to you prior to your final uh, interview with, with the candidates. Um, it's, it's really important to get this done in a, in a timely fashion. So again, we would be working with you and your staff to identify uh, focus groups, 
uh, stakeholders group at the final end. And the other part of this is that this is a confidential search, which means that neither we uh, nor board members would reveal the uh, names of the candidates unless and until that individual is, is a final candidate. And that allows us to go out and recruit people uh, who are sitting superintendents and in really good jobs. In Illinois has a lot of uh, issues, we understand that, but one of the things, uh, good things is uh, being able in the state of Illinois to be able to do confidential searches allows us to be able to go out and do this recruiting. The other thing is beyond the state of Illinois, um, again, I know a lot of people say Illinois, and, you know, people are leaving Illinois in, in numbers. Um, for superintendents, Illinois is not a bad <coughs> landing spot um, because of the confidentiality, uh, confidentiality. And the other part of it is that at least at this point in time, uh, your local tax dollars get to stay local. There are uh, many superintendents in surrounding states where um, their local tax dollars go to the state with the promise that those dollars will come back. And uh, that has not always been the case, which has led to uh, some districts not being able to uh, be at the level that they once were. So this is an extremely attractive school district for for candidates, um, and people will recognize that um, very quickly. Uh, so we expect that we would be able to, to gather um, um, an excellent pool of, of candidates for you. Gary, uh, I know we're bumping up against our share. We kind of conserved our voice, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, so that we didn't have to waste time during transition. But as Harry shared with you, um, we firmly believe that there is still more than enough time. Granted, we'd have to determine and develop uh, a relatively aggressive timetable, but given that, uh, we have full confidence that we'll be able to provide quality candidates for you to select from for your next report. There's one other thing, and that is, um, you know, we've talked about confidentiality, and, and uh, I know sometimes um, there is a concern if um, you know, there are stakeholders involved. We require anyone who would, who would be part of the stakeholders committee to sign a confidentiality agreement. Um, and we would uh, prepare whoever the chair of that stakeholders committee uh, might be uh, with documents, but also face-to-face -face discussion as to how to maintain the confidentiality, what to do, how to get the appropriate information to the board before their final questions. And again, obviously we, we would provide you with um, sample questions to use. We would also provide sample questions for the uh, committee to use as well. Um, and you know, as Gary said, I think we, we have done these in uh, very compact uh, timelines and I you know, feel we would be able to do that again uh, with you and your board. So, uh, with that, um, <coughs> we have to answer any questions that you might have. We know that you do have a copy of our proposal, mm -hmm. and in that is this flow chart, which we can go through this step by step, but again, in the interest of time, we think it's fairly self explanatory. But even knowing that this is what we call an aggressive or expedient search, we do not skip any of these steps or bypass them in any way, shape, or form. We will perform all of these things um, and give you the quality search that you deserve. Can you, can you just talk briefly, and I think you covered it, but this this time of year or the timing, is there is there a better time or is there other times that, that you think you'd attract more candidates or, or different candidates? Well, obviously different, but better candidates or a better pool? Yeah. I, w I would say this is right now, as long as uh, we're expeditious in uh, moving this forward immediately, this is the sort of round two when uh, candidates are starting to look for um, superintendencies. Round one obviously is right at the beginning, uh, shortly after the beginning of the school year, but round two is right after the holidays when superintendents are coming back 
and, and other administrators and starting to look to the future. So this is not a bad time for us to be able to go out and, and recruit candidates. Um, and, you know, we, we will say that, you know, if um, we were not able to bring candidates to you that you were happy with, uh, we would work with you then to provide an interim superintendent. But we really don't think this is a bad time um, because it is right after the holidays. People have just come back. So as long as we were able to get started soon, um, this is really not a bad time at all to get, get moving. Can you help us understand a little bit of how you vet candidates and how so that, you know, after the fact, there, there sure. wouldn't be a surprise for us. Well, first Sorry, of all, no. let me just say that uh, we're proud of the fact that our firm, I'm cautious every time I say this, <laughs> has been extremely fortunate in that we have not had any of the candidates that we have placed uh, show up in the newspaper for negative reasons, whether it be for ethical and or for poor decisions that they have made. Again, I. I'm always nervous about saying that only because it only takes one to uh, interrupt that record, if you will. Uh, but much of that is due to the fact that we vet our candidates extremely well. Um, in addition to just looking at applications uh, and screening candidates that way, every candidate list reference has letters of reference. We like to think that we can go beyond those people that they list as references and actually talk to other people in those districts to truly get a flavor for how those candidates are received in their districts. Candidates can tell us, you know, any number of things, and chances are their listed references will confirm a lot of those things. But we believe that one needs to go beyond those listed uh, references and truly know people in the community, the districts, and so on. Um, to verify um, these candidates. You know, you've heard of the sixth, sixth degree um, of everyone knowing each other somehow or being connected somehow. In education, we say it's about two <laughs> degrees. And as such, we um, inevitably, because of our contacts, because of our exposure and years in the district, um, we can easily connect with people who know other people. And if we're not 100% sure that we're providing candidates that our firm can stand behind proudly, then we will not bring them to and, then, and, and Greg has a question in a moment, but finally, do you have any searches going on right now in the area that would conflict you or, or restrict you from showing us candidates? None that would uh, restrict us. We are, um, we're in the middle of doing the Park Ridge Niles 64 uh, superintendent search, but they are ahead of you. Um, but full disclosure, yeah, that, that would be the only one. But it wouldn't, um, what, what we would do, and, and again, whether or not there would be any similar candidates would depend on what your profile looks like and what when we get a chance to meet with you uh, when we understand the priorities of the district. I mean, I'm not saying it isn't possible that there might be some candidates that would fit in both places, but we don't maintain a stable of candidates that we bring forward for every search. We really do, um, you know, take very seriously what we hear from the board, what we hear from focus groups. Um, in, in order to determine a profile and then start um, vetting candidates that would, would fit that profile. It does not mean, however, that we would not start immediately to gather as many candidates as possible. I'm not saying that many uh, of them would fit the profile, but first and foremost, we need to gather candidates for you. So we, we will reach out to every good superintendent um, and every rising star assistant superintendent and um, recruit them to apply. And then, f then the second step is to see which ones actually match your, your needs in Downers An example would be I had a conversation this morning with 
a potential candidate, superintendent, who had called me regarding a position. And he said, I believe I can do a super job in that district. I said, I believe you probably could do a super job in that district, but are you the best fit for that district? And therein lies the difference. There are many candidates out there that are quality superintendents. However, Downers Grove has its own unique qualities that are very special that I know and even remember. And from that standpoint, you deserve a candidate that will fit your district and work for you. And that's not to say that they would do an exceptional job somewhere else. All right. Let's say there is one, though. Just if, if we're in the search and you have, you're bringing six, seven candidates to Niles Park Ridge, are all six of those you excluded? Not that we would, of course, fit all six, but there's a possibility we might fit with one. Yep. So is that going to be a problem? If, with if that person became um, a finalist in um, another search that we're doing, we would not allow that person <coughs> to be brought forward to you. Right. Uh, well, that would be fair to them. And the other, right. the other way also, if you know the person was someone you were extremely interested in, we would not bring that full, that person forward in, in the other search. No, fair enough. Okay. I want to just make sure I understand those stakeholder groups um, yep. towards the end of the process when you, you boil it down to three candidates. Yep. So um, this is, I, I was curious because you mentioned how it's a confidential search, but then right. you were actually bringing the two of the candidates in with it to meet a group of people, right. all, a number of different stakeholders all at the same time. Is there any board participation there? No. Okay, so it's going to be um, uh, administ administrator representatives, leaders of bargaining units, community stakeholders, um, any other key players who, um, with the size of the, of, the, of the group in the room? Um, usually about a dozen. Okay. So they, they get an opportunity to, to have a face-to-face -face with each candidate, they sign that confidential agreement, and then they provide written feedback to the board. Correct. Okay. Correct. And, and that would come to you just prior, let, you know, let's say just, just as an example, they, if they met with the candidate, let's say four to five, PM, um, and then uh, the board met with the candidates at 5.30. That would give a half hour for that written feedback to come to the board for you to take a look at it, answer, uh, ask any follow-up questions that you might have after viewing what uh, the stakeholders have had to say about the candidates. Uh, so we would work with you on a schedule that would make sense for for you, uh, but I, I can honestly say I've done um, 75 to 80 searches and uh, we really have not had a problem. The people who are asked to be part of those stakeholder committees really do take it seriously. They see it as an honor uh, to be selected to be part of it and we really haven't had a breach of uh, confidentiality as Gary always says. And we have to knock on wood, but so far we we um, we're pretty um, explicit uh, in terms of, of our directions. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks again for the Thank you. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. thought, given the time and given people's time constraints tonight, we can have a brief discussion, but it, uh, I'll just throw it out there that I myself would probably rather re reflect on the notes and the proposals and try to come back and have another conversation <coughs> next week, if, if, unless people here all felt very strongly about who their choice may be. Yeah, I, I'm fine. I'm, I'll tell you Wednesday and Thursday next week. I am absolutely out. There's no way I got a work conflict that we not allow for it. So I, I don't know. And, and it doesn't. I mean, I can always vet my opinions. But, you know. Right. 
So I don't, what what would we be looking at if we're trying to schedule another day? Um, I think Tuesday was a possibility, and I think Darren might have had a conflict with that. I don't it's also the DGCC concert. Jill and I both have, we would uh, not And Jill, that's right. Yeah. And Unless it was early. It was early. This is where it gets tough. We have, mm-hmm. right, and then Darren and I have the Highland PTA meeting on Thursday. But they were going to try to tie it in with that if, could we if, have a if they did it on Thursday. Could we have a half hour conversation here and just see where we're getting to and have it for that? Or does anyone have a hard stop right now? Mm-hmm. Except at least, I mean, at least we can't do half hour, at least half hour minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I could you figure if people are, are willing to eliminate, can, eliminate some of the candidates and then we have, yes. um, have down to a couple. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That sounds fair. Okay. So, where are we? Where do people feel? I guess we can do a rat or whoever else would like to speak. Uh, there was a uh, with the IASB presentation. I thought there was a lot of strengths mm-hmm. there. The biggest concern I have was there's a conflict of interest in their dual role. Mm-hmm. And that conflict of interest doesn't necessarily serve us for the search in any particular way. Um, or there's not a particular strength there. Um, I recognize the conflict of interest and I appreciate them noting it, but from a selfish search perspective, and we want the best candidate, uh, I, don't, I don't think that hurdle is worth us making a sacrifice for any other reason. So that, that, from that presentation, that, one took, uh, that conflict of interest took them out of the running for me. The other three presentations I thought were more relevant because they didn't have that conflict. Um, I personally would agree with that. Mm-hmm. I agree. Okay. I'm so in agreement with three. that. Um, I'll share. Oh, let's keep going. Okay. Um, yeah, keep going. <laughs> I'll, we'll, yeah, we'll either agree or disagree. <laughs> I'll share that uh, I found uh, BWP's uh, approach uh, very strong. Um, no surprise to anybody in this room. Uh, I find a lot of value in people that care about their outcomes and talk about their outcomes in meaningful ways. Uh, and we talk about your outcomes in terms of placement for three years and s- successor contracts uh, with those kinds of measures. I didn't bet their numbers. I'm going to assume that they're accurate. Are ridiculously strong. Uh, this is a place where I have no doubt we are one of the most aspirational districts to work for in the state. Uh, we're going to get a great pool of candidates. What I don't want to happen is getting a great pool of candidates that then go elsewhere. Uh, and the fact that we're able to get, they're able to deliver candidates and in their process deliver candidates that stick around uh, for three, five, six years like we've had luxury of, uh, with Kerry, uh, I think that that's a, a, a really strong component from what stood out for their presentation. Uh, so I would not take them out of the running. I thought they were, I thought they were really strong. Uh, I'll pause there and let everybody others chime in. I felt like, for me, they were, they came in <coughs> one of the strongest, and kind of for the same reasons, I thought that they really, um, they, they understood, I, I, the way they explained it, I, I had them, and, and then uh, School Exec Connect is like my, my Those top, are my two. Those top two. Those are my two. Those are my top two. Um, my two. Um, they seem okay, to... So let's, we can just cross HYA off. We just heard five people say that we're done with two. Can we just name the... Challenge or is that not worth naming them? Why? I think we all know why, and I think people in the public have made us aware of why too, mm-hmm. even though we already knew it. Um. The concern that I always name it, the concern that I have is they did not talk about outcomes, uh, and I think we can all name why they haven't talked about outcomes. Yeah, they, they they've had, had some s- public failures. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, just on. the other two I thought were. Even if you take out that, yes. was it just a stronger presentation? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, regardless, yeah, they didn't exactly. I think they had. A, uh, they didn't have a stronger presentation. Uh. Yeah, and, and ironically, um, they, having just worked with us, I felt like um, both uh, BWP and, and, and School Exec Connect really seemed to kind of understand uh, the process that we wanted to go through, the timeline that we wanted to be on. They seemed very comfortable working within that range. They, they really seemed to focus on their, their, their proactivity. Um, I felt like BWP spoke a little bit better today. I, I, they, there, there was a confidence that I, that I saw in them and the work that I thought that they would do. Um, and, and a lot of that came from the way they talked about their outcomes. I, I thought they spoke to that the best. And and they had a lot of pride in that, and I and, and I, I did like I did like that aspect of it. My only concern with 
and I honestly, I thought I was impressed with the proposal and including the presentation was the, their process of building a profile and, and incorporating feedback from the community was not to me as clear as it was for school exec connect. I feel like school exec connect more clearly expressed how we would involve the appropriate people throughout the process to make sure that that we have that um, the 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 I'm losing my words. Mm -hmm. Not, Engagement's not the right word, but to make sure that everybody is more in agreement. So then when we bring in a new superintendent, mm -hmm. they're coming and feeling like they have the endorsement of the entire community. Mm -hmm. sure. And so that helps to get that whole, mm -hmm. when right. you start, you're starting running and already feeling like you have everybody behind you. I felt like that a little stronger when schools that connect than the BWP. I think maybe I just, you know, when they spoke, I heard them speaking to it more. But when I looked through the materials, I, I didn't see it there. So that was me. Okay. Either I would be happy with either um, BWB is a neck ahead mm -hmm. um, for just what I saw tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, if it's worth it anyway, they're also slightly more expensive. Not <laughs> it, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. Right. Now, but if who's they more are, expensive? Uh, BWB is slightly more expensive. But they, but they were, honestly, I thought the only difference in price really was the ISP who would right. take off the list. I thought everybody else was pretty much. It was all real close, right? It, they're all close. <coughs> School Exec Connect just, this is their search, this is their fee, and I know they got like, you know, everybody charges advertising. That's just standard yep. anywhere, no matter what you do, um, whether you're in public or private. Um, School Exec just said, this is how we do, this is how we lay it out. This is, this, it, it, they just seem to have, um, they, they didn't have the a la carte art option where you know, they have some estimates that uh, BWP has. Um, so, I mean, it, yeah, we're talking min minuscule differences. They both have very strong teams. They both have depth. Um, they both are um, pretty strong. And school exec connect, maybe because I'm just more familiar with them. <laughs> um, we've had luck in the past. So. Um, they do exactly. Yeah, they do exactly what we say. Um, I mean, they didn't even. They didn't. They didn't even question that they would have an online survey and meet with focus groups. They just mm -hmm. said that's what they do. Yeah. You know, the other ones were like, "Well, we can do it if you want." They were. I thought school exec was already saying this is the right way to do it. You can do it however you want. Yeah, we get that. But they just kind of came right out front and said, "This is our fee. This is what we do." They're, you don't really pick a la carte. We we do this. Um, BWP was, I thought, really strong too. Um, so I, th I do not think we would go wrong with either one of them. So um, I'm not saying I'm just think what I I saw here and what I if you want a differentiator for me, I thought that school exec was like threw that right out there that and, and talked us through that. B BWP mentioned it, but they didn't go in quite as detailed in the graphs and everything. Like that. Yeah, it's on their timeline, but they time didn't line. speak much to it. Mm -hmm. But what I did like that they spoke about was the vetting process, and I think maybe yeah. that's what got me excited yeah. about it. Um, Good point. Good point. It is, is that, that, that drew me in a little bit. It wasn't part of a question that you asked, but part of something that, that seemed very, very important to them. So mm -hmm. uh, that probably is something that elevated. But on the other side, I do like it, how, on top of the engagement process, at different phases, that school exec connect wanted to be part of. Mm -hmm. um. Elizabeth, I'd like your point around. Um, so, uh, VWP does mention in their proposal the stakeholder, uh, stakeholder survey. And uh, stakeholder they, they mentioned it, they just didn't highlight it. They just didn't it highlight it, uh, which I think kind of gets back to John, your point around this is kind of how we do things. And this is like, this is our approach. Like, this is the approach that you should be taking. Um, they didn't seem to leave it up for us. So I think, I, yeah, I agree with both everything that's been said about BWP and schools at the moment. I don't think we can go wrong. If you had to pick. <laughs> right, if you had to pick. <laughs> um, because you do. <laughs> <laughs> because you do have to pick. <laughs> we all have to pick. Could we do a uh, silence right instead of a group think? 
Yeah. Well, we don't uh, necessarily heard from Doug. Uh, my, my, thought, my thoughts are, are, are not that different. Uh, I had BWP as a slight number one, but would be incredibly happy with who we set command. And I said that ju just because the, I, I like the bench. I like I like that they're who they potentially would reach out to a, a, a huge audience. Not that ExecConnect wouldn't. Um, just They've done similar searches and timelines. So. Just a slight, slight edge. Uh, so none of the comments here uh, so far have been any different than mine. I think we're all. Yeah. I, I think I'm slightly the opposite side for you. Uh, I think that I'd be happy with both of them, but I, I would lean towards school exec connect. I just felt like they would perhaps be more in line with what our community is looking for um, and, and what we're, we're saying in the strategic plan we're, we're, we're trying to do in, in, in terms of the transparency of the search. But I thought BWP, the people that have gone in, the connections they have, and the fact that both of those groups understand that we don't want to just wait and see who applies. We, we want to go out and find the right people. We can come to the both of them the job. I would echo your sentiment there. I think, um, I think to the slight edge, I would go with um, school to connect. Just because of, of the way they describe stakeholder, stakeholder input as foundation. How much of that is process? In that if we asked for that to be the pro part of the process, I imagine BWP would adjust that timeline to make sure that that happened. It looks like they would adjust the timeline on the cost of money, which, which is fair. Right. I think from a cost perspective, I'll be honest, I think the cost perspective, I think we should take that off the table. It's negligible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even, it's honestly, even though you know, it's twice the cost, mm -hmm. we're talking about a negligible right. decision. Yeah. I'm just going to take that out of, out of the table. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I think that, that uh, the, the reason that uh, schools that connect stands out is a process, and there's nothing stopping us from taking their process and making it our process and leveraging what I thought was a really strong network and the team that they brought today, uh, the team that they would put on it, just seemed to stand out as a ridiculously strong match of experience doing this and having been in the position literally still as a superintendent. And that mix of a network is something that we'll, we'll surely benefit from. Uh, and the fact that there's people that are already reaching out to them at conferences saying, are you the one going to be doing the search? I'd love to talk to you. That was BWP. Uh, yes, BWP. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm saying right now is about BWP. Sorry, okay. I apologize. Uh, I would, I, I would lean in that direction. And, and I think that makes sense. I think that's a really good point. That, it, that at the end of the day, we're picking the people that we want to lead the search, and, and we can determine what the, the best mm -hmm. approach is. And now we have four mm -hmm. um, best practices to work from, which is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, uh, oh, uh, BWP, I, I just was saying, they didn't maybe stress it enough. They, it is in their plan, and they would do it. It's on their timeline. Mm -hmm. It's already on their timeline that they would do it. I was just making the point that the other one took a point of stressing it. And they all stressed different things. But uh, I, I didn't consider you know, some of the things you just said about maybe the diversity of the team, of experience diversity. Um, they're, they're familiar with the area. Both of them are familiar with the area. That was strong for, for both of them. Um, BWP did do initially, you know, they, they compared a similar timeline uh, in 181. I mean, basically the same market rank. Yeah. Um, so, um, again, I it was, you know, Exec Connect, I just remember some things about them. That's, so, uh, I don't know if I have. Anything that creates a, a m meaningful degree of separation, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like saying I'm 99.9 percent .9 sure, I'm 99.89 percent sure. Really, statistically, <coughs> I'm comfortable with either one. I would suggest, and sorry, Joe, I still want to I think you've already weighed in there. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you've weighed right. in yet. Um, I still say that BWP edges it for me, and I and I think kind of what you were, were speaking to a little bit, Karat, is that um, it was already on our desire list to do sort of the 
uh, reach out with the community and, and all those different steps. And in a 15 minute window, I, I think they obviously picked maybe what their, their strongest points were. And I, I thought some of those key points in the depth of their bench, just I, I felt like the level of work I was going to get from BWP edged out uh, school exec a little bit. Um, and, and, and sort of their focus on outcomes. I really like that. Like, hey, look, we're not going to bring you an all-star and then just kind of try <coughs> to come back and, and, and take them out of your district. I, I like them addressing that part of it because I'm not going to lie. That's something that, you know, that, that pops into my head um, as well. Uh, but I did focus on that first year of helping you through the transition to... Right. That, yeah, I, 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 I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah that, so, so those pieces were really strong for me. And I, th- sorry, I think what I was going to say was I think we have two really strong groups that I'm comfortable with. I actually thought, I think you would convince me that you might be the better choice. I think, I think, I think, you your, I think your perspective really makes a lot of sense to me. I think what's most important is that we not lose another week or two to the process yeah, because, exactly. of our sec- because of our scheduling. Right. Right. I think that we feel comfortable that we found you know, a great group of people that, they, that can guide us there. The, what I heard four different presentations tell us is the most important thing is one. Right. You know, as soon as you can to, to get to get going, so that they can get going to start finding who the right people are for us. Yeah. I mean, they're key. You said it. Yeah. You, know, you don't need you don't need many anymore. No. You could have 500 terrible candidates, <laughs> or you can have five good candidates. You, you just never know. Okay. So we're comfortable down with BWP. Absolutely. Going forward with that. You're more than yeah, comfortable I with them. I, th- yeah, I thought they came in and did a great presentation with a really strong list of references and, and really uh, the, the people that came in and, and the people that I feel like they have access to is really going to do wonderful things for us. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll move on to reception of visitors. This is an opportunity for members of the audience to provide a public comment to the board. Subject to reasonable constraints, but is not intended to be a time for members of the public to enter into a dialogue with the board. Issues raised during public comment may be added to future agendas or addressed by administrative staff as appropriate. Criticism of individuals is not in order. In accordance with board policies 8022 and 1150, individuals appearing before the board are expected to follow these guidelines. One, any person addressing the board shall identify yourself, say your school attendance area, and shall speak as briefly as possible. Two, the board president has the authority to determine procedural matters regarding public participation, not otherwise in board policy, including time limitations when appropriate, which tonight we will limit to uh, three minutes per person, and we'll do a total of 15 minutes max. Uh, We invite those who have submitted cards to speak first. Uh, The president is responsible for the orderly conduct of the meeting and shall rule on such matters as the time to be allowed for public discussion and the appropriateness of the remarks subject under consideration. At this time, we received no cards, so we will open it up to the public to see and ask anybody just to stand, state your name, and your attendance area. Hi, Chris Hanley, uh, Upper. A um, couple things, a uh, few topics. Um, I'm glad to see that uh, Mr. Miller and I had a conversation outside. Uh, there are some firms that were here tonight with some high profile uh, misfires. Um, I would also caution you that. Um, in a 30-second Google search, um, there was a misfire, recent misfire in Beloit for school exec um, that directly contradicted what the gentleman said about not the firm not being in the headlines. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would caution you on that. That was not any detective work on mine. That was a Google search. Um, I also am reiterating my concerns about the, the timeline. Um, that I mentioned on Monday night um, in regards to the impending election. Um, I didn't hear from any of the firms, I didn't delve into any of their uh, proposals, but about engaging with potential candidates for the, the board members. Um, the board potentially has a, a, high, a high turnover rate given the April election. That board's going to have to have a relationship with the incoming superintendent. Um, I'm concerned about the timeline of getting someone in before that election takes place. I know it's a complicating factor, but those are the the, 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 the timelines that we <coughs> run into. So um, I hope that there is an opportunity for 
the potential candidates, the candidates for the board to be part of the engagement process with the search process. Thank you very much. Uh, Craig Young, TGEA. Um, I, I was also impressed. Uh, obviously, they all had a really limited uh, amount of time tonight to speak. Um, but as I was listening, it seemed the one big difference that you guys did not uh, discuss during your own discussion, um, the MVP seemed like they were very, we want to be transparent. Mm -hmm. uh, we really want to be open. And, uh, and then, obviously, the other one was the, the confidentiality. And we're going to make people sign disclosures that they're not going to uh, give any information just had a different feel for me um, so I, I thought that that might be a factor as well mm -hmm. um, but I did notice that all of the timelines uh, all the proposals really just end with that hire um, or, or beyond but there's always you're making a hire um, and so I know you know Monday when you guys were having your discussion there was you know some back and forth about well you know let's get this process started there's no reason to wait and if there are no good candidates you know John had said if there's 500 you know terrible candidates like then let's not do anything. So um, I, I just, as we go public with whatever we're doing here, um, you, you, uh, sorry, I didn't say that. Yeah. Um, one of them did say, they mentioned that they, if it didn't lead to a hire, they would work with us on a interim. Yeah, right. So that's kind of what I thought was maybe, you know, just highlighting that, that ability that, you know, it doesn't have to have that hire. Um, we just don't want, you know, your words on Monday to feel like lip service, but not really, you know, having a meeting. But when um, the proposals all have that higher in there, just, you know, so something to think about as well. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Uh, next is the recommendation for action approval for a superintendent search firm. Uh, is there a motion to approve BWP and Associates? Uh, for the superintendent search proposal as presented, subject to our attorney review. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Melissa, please call roll. Member Samanti? Aye. Member Siegel? Aye. Member Doshi? Aye. Member Harris? Aye. Member Hughes? Aye. Member Miller? Aye. Member Purcell? Aye. The motion carried. Uh, to approve BWP and Associates uh, for the superintendent search proposal as presented subject to our attorney review. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. The meeting is adjourned at 7.16 p.m.